Okay, we have two integrals right here. The first one is the integral of square root of 9 minus x squared. And for the second one, we pretty much have the same thing, but we go from negative 3 to positive 3. Yes, this right here is in fact so much easier. That's why I only give this a little space right here. And this right here will take us some time to do it. Right? So let's tackle this one first. Right here, as we all know, when we have a definite integral, remember, we can interpret this as the area under this curve. And when you graph square root of 9 minus x squared, you just get a semicircle with radius 3. So let me just show you guys this right here real quick. If you graph square root of 9 minus x squared, again, it's a semicircle. You can square both sides and you can put the equation in the standard form. But when you just have the positive square root, it's just the semicircle. And in fact, we do have the radius being 3. So this is negative 3, this is positive 3. And this right here is just calculate the area under this curve from negative 3 to positive 3. And as we all know, the radius is 3. So the area here is so simple because it's just half of the circle. We know the whole circle is pi r squared and we just one half. So you see this is just one half, pi is pi, and the r is 3. So we have pi times 3 squared and then also divided by 2. So all in all, this is 9 pi over 2. And then that's it. The answer to this is just 9 pi over 2. Okay? So that's the deal. However, though, imagine if you have to go from negative 2 to 1, maybe go from here to here, maybe you have to do some legitimate integrations and then plug in numbers. In fact, you can still do some trick, but we're in calculus, so we are going to do some calculus. Let's go ahead and do this indefinite integral, and then, you know, you can plug in numbers forever you want. Of course, the domain for this is from negative 3 to 3, so just keep that in mind. Okay, here we go. We have the square root of 9, which is the same as 3 squared, and then minus x squared. So, first, take a look. We have a number minus x squared, and we know 1 minus sine squared will give us cosine squared. So I will take x to be sine theta. We'll go to the theta world. But since this is a 9, which is 3 squared, I'm going to multiply this by 3. And you'll see this is going to work out nicely. OK, we'll take this to the theta world. So we will have to differentiate this on both sides. dx is equal to the derivative of this, which is 3 cosine theta d theta. This is just the derivative. And now, let's take this to the theta world. We have the integral, and then we will have the square root. This right here is 9. It's a minus. And then I'll put the parentheses. The x is 3 sine theta. And of course, we have the square right here. And then the dx is exactly this. So we multiply by 3 cosine theta d theta, like that. OK, let's simplify the expression inside of the square root. I'll do it in blue. First of all, we see that this is the same as square root of 9 minus this is 3 squared, which is 9. And then we have the sine square theta. And you see, both of them have the 9 now. That's why we need to multiply this by 3. So I can factor out the 9. And then we were left with 1 minus sine square theta. And then, as we all know, this right here is precisely cosine square theta. So I'll write this down again for you guys. That's the square root of 9 times cosine square theta. And when we take the square root, this is so much easier now because it's just one term. It's 9 times this. So I can just do the square root of 9, which is 3, and then the square root of cosine square theta. And we'll assume everything will be positive, so we don't need absolute value. This will be cosine theta to the first power. So that's what we have. And let me just write this down right here for you guys on the side. This is the integral. We have 3 times 3, which is 9. So I will actually take this 9 on the outside. Take this outside. Don't say that to your classmate, otherwise you're getting trouble. 
Okay, be nice to your classmates, be nice to your people. Anyway, this time star is cosine square theta d theta right here. So it simplifies this. To and now we just have to integrate cosine square theta. And to do so, we have to use an identity, namely the power reduction formula. So we can go from cosine to the second power to cosine to the first power. And let me write that down right here for you guys. And let me just put an equal sign here because I don't want to erase this. So we have the 9 right here. Let's write that down. And then cosine squared theta is equal to 1 half times. And the half is a constant multiple. So I will put it on the outside of the integral. And then we have the integral. And then it's 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, like this. And then, of course, close the integral with the d theta. And then we'll finish this now. 9 times 1 half, of course, that's 9 over 2. And then let me open the parentheses for the result of integration. The integral of 1 in the theta world is just theta. And then the integral of cosine of 2 theta, we can do the following. Because the derivative of 2 theta is just a 2, it's just a constant 2. So you ask yourself, what's the integral of cosine? And the answer for that is plus the sine. So you keep the plus, and then this is going to be a sine. And the input stays the same. But when you go backwards, you are doing the antiderivative, right? Be sure you look at the derivative of 2 theta, which is 2, and you divide it by 2. In another word, you multiply by 1 half right here. So this is pretty much it. We did the integration now, and we just have to go back to the x world from this point on. Well, well, let's see. Let me actually distribute this. So we have 9 over 2 theta, and then this times that is, of course, 9 over 4. But we have a small trouble with the sine of 2 theta. Because originally, this is 3 sine 1 theta equals x. For sine of 2 theta, do the following. Look at this and use the double angle identity. Put that down as times 2 sine theta cosine theta. All right? And of course, you can simplify this, but we will worry, we will worry about that later because I want to figure out theta and also cosine theta in the x world. Let's do that right here. Look back to this equation. x is equal to 3 sine theta. Let's divide both sides by 3. So we know sine theta is equal to x over 3. First thing first, I want to get theta by itself. And to do so, let me just take the inverse sign on both sides. So we get theta being equal to inverse sine of this, which is x over 3. So let me just put this right here for theta. So let's make that happen. We have now 9 over 2. And then this is inverse sine of x over 3, like this. OK, of course, this and that we can cancel. But as I said, we'll about that later. And um, I need to figure out cosine. So let's do the following. This right here, we can draw a right triangle. Because as we know, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And let me just put the triangle right here. And the angle theta to be here. X will be labeled here, and this three is the hypotenuse, which is here. And for this side, to figure this out, we first open the square root, and then we do the hypotenuse square, which is 3 square, and yes, that's 9. And then minus this square, which is x square, like that. So here we go, we'll finish this up. First, of course, this and that is just going to be 1 half. So we have plus 9 over 2 as well. First, sine theta, this here is just x over 3. So let's put that down. And then for cosine theta, this right here, look at this triangle. It's the adjacent over hypotenuse, which is square root of 9 minus x squared, because 3 squared is 9, of course, and then over the hypotenuse, which is 3. So that's what we have right here. OK. That's pretty much it. But however, just do your fractions, seriously. Because as you can see, 9 on the top, 3 times 3 on the bottom, it's also 9. So of course, we can cancel this with this out. Finally, we have the answer. 
9 over 2 inverse sine of x over 3. And then we have plus x over 2. Uh, actually, let me just put on the 1 half because I like to usually write down the 1 half all the way in the front and then the x on the side and then the square root of 9 minus x squared right here. And with that, we are done. So we put plus c and box the answer. Whew. This is it.